In this demonstration, we're going to talk about uh, accessing SaaS or Oracle Cloud applications through the REST services they provide. So we start here with an application, and if your application is configured correctly for SaaS environments under your application setting and services, you would have an entry that maps to your specific Oracle SaaS instance. If it's not configured this way, you can add additional things, you can override and basically have a configuration that points to your SaaS instance uh, over here. And if you're also configured with single sign-on, you can use the Oracle Cloud account to access it. With an environment that is configured this way, you can access the service catalog, the Oracle Cloud application, you'll see the various modules and when you look drill into one of those, you'll be able to see the objects that are available and the different methods they expose. However, in some cases, you're doing development on an environment that is not completely configured yet, and you might want to add specific REST endpoints. Now, some people do it by clicking on the defined by endpoint. That's the wrong way to work with Oracle SaaS REST services. Instead, you should be using the middle option of defined by specification and then use the ADF describe approach to define the endpoints that you have. If you go to the REST documentation for your Oracle Cloud application, you can find information in the getting started on the exact URL and how it formats to access an instance of an object. So if we will take, for example, this uh, URL that access the workers object, we can just paste it over here and then at the beginning of it, of course, provide the URL to your Oracle SaaS instance. Now, instead of accessing the specific REST service, if you go over to the Learn More section of the documentation, you'll see that there's a section about metadata and Oracle Visual Builder knows how to use this metadata and to access it, you just need to add this describe at the end of the URL to your object. So each of those objects that you see here would have a describe for it. So we're going to work with the grades object. So instead of workers, we're going to use grades. And then we're going to add the slash describe at the end. And the slash describes allow us to access the metadata. And Visual Builder then knows how to uh, interpret the working with the service. Of course, you can also define the security if you don't have single sign-on right now configured as I don't have it. You can use basic authentication while doing development. And you can also define the cores uh, configuration of your backends. Uh, you should enable cores for your SaaS instance uh, to be accessed from your Visual Builder instance. And in my case, I have a different configuration again. But over here, you can see in the next step, you see the various metadata that is available on grades and you can pick up the specific endpoints you want to use. And then you can also test them and see the results. There's a bunch of parameters you can pass, including aspects like the value of the REST framework, which by the way has impacts on things like uh, searching based on uppercase, lowercase, and other um, aspects like that. Anyway, once you have this defined, you're able to use it inside your application. So let's go over to our application and drop a table and bind it to this REST service we just connected. Now, the nice thing is because we're using the metadata, Visual Builder knows not just which fields are in there and what's their type. It also knows how to use advanced capabilities such as pagination, uh, limiting the records and also filter criterion. So over here we can, for example, go over and define a new criteria for which records we're going to fetch. Now this is going to be done using the filter criterion and because we're using a SAS REST service, it's going to use the queue parameter to define the query that we're going to do. So we're going to look up for all um, the grades that have the name uh, in the name they have scale and we can add additional conditions for example if we wanted to do another condition over here we can have a active um, equal for example the letter a i actually don't know if there are data if there is data that matches this but just to show you that we can do this complex uh, query this is now going to fetch the data i'm going to open the network um, tab to show you the actual rest call that is being executed Okay, we didn't get any records back, but we can see the REST call down here. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom in the request, 
you'll be able to see the queue parameter that was formatted by Visual Builder and sent over to the SaaS endpoint, to the cloud application endpoint. If we actually want some data back, uh, we might want to modify this condition. So let's go to the definition of our uh, service data provider um, and to the filter criterion. And we can simply remove the second condition here. So leaving just the fetching of everything that has the name uh, that contains scale. So now if we're doing this, we can actually see the data coming back. And if we go and look at the query, we can see the new query and the new queue parameter. Beyond uh, doing filters, we also know how to do sorting. So if you go over to your table now and you enable one of the columns to be sortable, uh, you can do this by going over um, to the data tab and picking up the column. And for example, the grade ID, going over to the detailed properties for it and turning on enabled for sorting. If we switch back to live mode, you'll be able to see that we can now sort either ascending or descending this column and the records accordingly adjust. And again, if we go over to the network tab, we can see the new section here that has an order by that results in the sorting.